see this apartment building right uh -huh. above that FedEx truck? Yeah. So, okay, the second floor, that window you see there toward the front, and then that balcony, then go to the next floor up, there's a balcony and there's a window. So we rented that back in the 70s, and this Spiro Savella War was really starting to heat up. So at the time, we didn't know, nobody really knew a lot about Carl Spiro and this operation that he was putting together. Because it was, it was new. He had just got out of the penitentiary. He'd been going around recruiting people. He wasn't operating in uh, with the north, what we call the, the Sevilla guys in the north end out of the trap. He didn't go down there. He was in, in, in a war with them, really. Mm -hmm. Kind of a secret war in a way. Uh, the Johnny Greenhead had gone down, and, and they knew he probably had something to do with that. And and he had a friend of his named Frankie Tadero that owned the club right there on the corner. If you, it's a vacant lot now, right next to uh, see, uh, see where that there. guy's standing where those trash bags and everything are. <laughs> that was that was a like a one-story tavern called the Virginian. That's Virginia Street that goes right by it. Mm -hmm. Admiral Virginia, and then right next to it's also torn down. Frankie Dodaro lived there. Frankie Dodaro was a fence and uh, been a burglar in his life, and his dad had owned that joint, and he'd just taken it over. And I think his mother lived next door in that apartment building, and he lived in that apartment building. And this Sparrow, Sparrow lived uh, out out of town, really. He'd moved way out of town, about 10 miles or 20 miles out of town, but he'd come into town and he'd go into that club. And, and so we wanted to see who he was meeting. And, you know, this was, seemed to obviously be his kind of base of operations, and that's where you want to be to see who's meeting him mm -hmm. and, and to figure out what, who his crew is because nobody knew. So we sit up there with a the video camera. Well, first time anybody in my unit used a video camera. He had it laying around for a while, but nobody, <laughs> one of the old-timers wanted to use it. And I said, well, let me try that thing. So I got it out and started messing with it. had those, those great big VHS tapes. And, so we sat it up there and, and, you know, pointed out the window looking down onto the Virginian. And like I said, if you get a couple of three floors up, nobody ever looks up there and stay back away from the window. So we manned that thing five, six days a week. We didn't stay here at nights. Well, I think we did it the first, we had a night shift, but mainly we did it like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning till five or six o'clock in the evening. That was when the most you know, like meeting kind of action, that kind of thing, because in the evening, then it's more like party time. So we're documenting all these people coming and going and seeing Carl come out, you know, again, the old walk and talk, talking to people. And, and you know, anybody that went in there, you figure, you, you didn't see Nick Savella going in there. You didn't see anybody that was close to the Savellas going in. So you figure anybody's going in there either is, is has no real relationship with him or he's part he's part of the Savella faction mm -hmm. and so we did this for a month and after a month you kind of you know you, you, you got the same people coming and going you got a, a fix on the pattern you know who you know kind of who's important and who's there a lot when Carl's there and if Carl isn't there they aren't there and that kind of thing and that's gathering intelligence so you kind of got a got a feel for who's who and we pull out of there and about I think it was within the next six weeks, I get a call at home in the one night, and they said, you won't believe this, that somebody, just three guys went into the Virginian and shot up all three Spiro brothers. We said, oh, all shit. All three of them. So, wow. Boss was one on the phone, and he said, Gary says, you live up north there, I'm closer to the airport. Go to the airport and just sit and see if you see anything funny coming in or out. See if anybody's leaving. Right, <laughs> and, and you know somebody that doesn't look right. You know you don't know you don't know what we're looking for, but you know it's possible. And so you got this whole twelve guys that if you can get hold of them at home, you can send them into different areas and just to, to try something. Pretty brutal, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment any key takeaways that you got from it. Please share it with anyone that you think will enjoy this type of content. Also, please don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to get the rest of the Kansas City Mafia Tour. At the end of this video, a playlist will pop up. It's named the Kansas City Mafia Tour, and there you can find all the videos linked to this tour. Thank you again for watching.